ZeroHedge.com. John McAfee, a resident in Spain, and charged with tax evasion and promoting initial coin offering. Now, it's funny. I understand that you can be charged with tax evasion. Like, if you don't let us steal your money, we're, we, we've designated that a crime as government. That's, that's, that's a crime. Uh, not, a, not a real crime. There's no victim. But it's a uh, crime on the books, so to speak. But promoting initial coin offerings? I think there's just a, a miswording in this headline, charged with promoting initial coin offerings, because that's not the exact charge. It, th th there's, there's an element of fraud that they're accusing him of here. And, and people have said this stuff about, about John McAfee for years. And, and when we were running mates, I was aware that, uh, that there was this criticism that he was engaged in a kind of uh, pump and dump, if you, want, uh, you know, if you want to describe it as, as badly as possible, for uh, promoting new cryptocurrencies and making money off of them as their prices went up because he was able to convince his large Twitter follower to buy into these new cryptocurrencies. Now, in and of itself, if that's not really, if you're making money just promoting new cryptocurrencies and someone comes to you and says, hey, I've got a new cryptocurrency, you've got a big platform, I'll give you some of this new currency to promote it and you get a chunk of it and you promote it and it goes up and then you realize, oh, it's just another, uh, you know, bullshit shot at replacing Bitcoin or, or one of the other dominant cryptos that actually has like a monetary purpose and, and then you sell it that in and of itself is fine. The question is, you well, you do walk up to a lot of lines with that, right? If you did it knowingly in advance that that was what was going to happen, then it is a form of fraud. And if you try to sell something to someone in order for your holdings of that something to go up in value, uh, with the intent of selling it, knowing that that value doesn't exist, then you're committing fraud. And if you're lying about it in the course of doing so, that might be a separately identifiable crime. So I think that's what they're getting at here. Quick end of the story here. A little over a year after former tech guru and one-time presidential candidate, John McAfee was arrested in the Dominican Republic aboard a yacht carrying high-caliber weapons, ammunition, and military-style gear. You know what? I'm... I wonder if, like, they're. I mean, this is this is by Tyler Durden. This is from Zero Edge. I'm a little surprised they're taking this kind of mainstream, you know, uh, negative, just degrading kind of journalism. I mean, they have to put in parentheses aboard a yacht carrying high caliber weapons, ammunition, and military style gear. I mean, it reminds me of when I was arrested in, in, and had my home raided in Virginia and the judge said, I had an arsenal. You had an arsenal of guns because I had about a dozen guns in a safe, most of which I didn't even have ammo for. And military style equipment, you're like, seems a little bit sensationalist. And two months after a fake arrest for wearing a thong mask, on Monday, the eccentric millionaire was arrested, this time for real in Spain, where he is awaiting extradition to the U.S. after he was charged with tax evasion by federal prosecutors who allege McAfee hid cryptocurrency, a yacht, and real estate as part of a conspiracy to evade taxes, which he forgot to pay from, he forgot to pay from 2014 to 2018. Wait, this motherfucker can hide a yacht? Sounds like a magician. I think we should let him go. At the same time, the SEC also charged the former programmer for promoting investments in ICOs to his Twitter followers without disclosing that he was paid to do so. McAfee's bodyguard, Jimmy Watson Jr., was also charged for his role in the alleged scheme. So, you know, well, if you're not disclosing that you're paid to do so, I, is that in itself? A, like, if I, if I were paid by... Uh, by Namecheap, the web hosting company, to mention that I use them on the air, and you know, like I like I say, not a paid promotion, because uh, I mean, it's just kind of an expectation of disclosure, I guess, and honesty, directness, openness with my audience. But it's also uh, a way of bolstering my 
uh, endorsement in that sense. When I say I use Namecheap and I like it, and they're not paying me to say that, it's a little more genuine than if I left that off or said, and they're paying me to say this. <clears throat> and with John McAfee, in the case of these ICOs, he's being paid to promote these ICOs and not disclosing that. I think this is a buyer beware kind of situation. If so, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm missing something here, but if, if I, I mean, if someone is selling you something, do they have a lawful, not legal separate question, but do they have a, a sort of lawful responsibility to tell you that someone is paying them to sell that? I don't think they do. I think, there's an obligation to answer honestly. If they answer dishonestly, then they're committing fraud. But I don't think it's a fraud by omission. If you leave that out, I mean, everybody who's selling something is usually getting, a lot of, most people selling stuff are getting paid to sell stuff, <laughs> you know, or they're selling it for themselves. So I'm, 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 I'm pretty discouraged by this. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if there were plenty of other laws and not the natural law that John McAfee has broken here and that they're kind of going on a fishing expedition. We got an excuse to arrest him, which gives us access to more of his stuff, his data, his records. And I, I think that uh, at worst what, to describe, you know, what, what John McAfee was doing with, ICOs was a little bit self-serving, but unless he knew and unless they can prove that he knew there was some other manipulation behind what he's doing, we're talking about victimless crimes. So I'm, I'm really disheartened by this. You know, I, I thought John McAfee's wild ride would never come to an end. Uh, according to the story, McAfee's last tweet is from September 12, in which he explained why he is not voting for anyone. This is a great tweet, by the way. He says, who am I voting for? No one. Why would I choose one person over another to control me? Slave masters are the same. We are numbers rather, rather than people, irrespective of the master. And, you know, I, I think there's a certain amount of incentive for, I, I mean, if you think about like a secret government most wanted list, like who's going to be the guy that gets John McAfee. He's got to be pretty up there on the list as a, as a uh, high value target for bragging rights among the feds. And so now it's sec saying that he was in his promotion of ICOs doing so fraudulently, how they're going to prove an, an obligation to disclose and something like this. Oh, well, here's a quote from, Christina Littman, the cyber unit chief of the SEC. Potential investors in digital asset securities are entitled to know if promoters were compensated by the issuers of those securities. McAfee, assisted by Watson, allegedly leveraged his fame to deceptively tout numerous digital asset securities to his followers without informing investors of his role as a paid promoter. Hmm. I don't think we want government to come in and tell us what other people have an obligation to tell us or not in business dealings. That being said, this enforcement paradigm being the only mechanism or rather the best or no, uh, the dominant government mechanism by which society deals with issues like this these days. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun uh, to, to watch this one play out in the courts and see how they really try to uh, to pin it on John. But right now, um, just for, for this, you know, warrior for freedom, you know, and, and uh, there, someone who is, whose voice has promoted uh, ethics and libertarian values uh, powerfully and consistently, it's no surprise that they're, they're finding something to go after him for. Now, I'm not trying to make any particular call about, you know, any of these charges um, about about the facts that we don't have uh, we don't have all of them yet but uh, we have come to a sad state of affairs in the world 
where for most governments and certainly the United States federal government, they have written so many laws. I mean, how many pages in the federal registry? It's, it's insane. But the point is that they have criminalized so much of normal human behavior uh, that there's a book about this. There's a book written by a law professor called Three Felonies a Day because the average American commits three felonies a day, mostly in financial crimes that we don't know even are crimes. So the effect of that is that if they don't like you, they can arrest you at any time. Literally anybody. Now, yeah, there's a sort of limit on this of did I trigger them? Did I upset them? Did I did I give them an excuse? I'm I'm still well within the the norm of what everybody uh, you know around me is doing. But what if they mistake you for the wrong person? What if they don't like you for your political opinions or the challenge that you represent to authority? as John McAfee does so brilliantly.